Hey, this is Dr. Laura Conover, and today I want to talk to you about something you probably don't think about a lot, and that's your cerebrospinal fluid. So your cerebrospinal fluid encases your brain and your spinal column, so your whole central nervous system, with this nutrient-rich fluid that provides buoyancy and protection. It actually takes some of the weight away from the gravity impacting your brain, and it provides buoyancy and cushioning. It also brings nutrition, it brings oxygen, and it even removes waste. So it removes metabolic waste from our neurons. So it basically keeps our brain fresh. It perfuses and bathes our brain and our spinal column and keeps it functioning optimally. So are there things we can do that impact how our cerebrospinal fluid works so we can boost our health? And the answer is yes. And this is new information that we're just finding out now. So there was a study that showed deep abdominal breathing creates this beautiful pulsatile movement of cerebrospinal fluid, this fresh nutrient-rich bath to your brain. And what created the most movement to this fluid is abdominal breathing. So you wanna bring your breath all the way down into your core and let your belly expand as you inhale and slowly exhale. And that means that we actually have conscious control over boosting the movement of our cerebrospinal fluid, which means we have conscious control over bringing fresh oxygen and nutrition and removing toxic waste from our neurons just by belly breathing. It was a recent study where they enrolled participants and they did four weeks of deep abdominal breathing, belly breathing, and it actually decreased markers of Alzheimer's, beta and tau amyloid proteins in the blood. So, and that was just after four weeks of nice deep belly breathing. We know this works not just because of that Alzheimer's study, but there was another study where they enrolled elderly participants in a breathing program. Researchers followed these participants and after six months retested their cognitive function and those that were enrolled in the breathing program, elderly, already having cognitive decline, actually boosted cognitive function just by focusing on a breathing program. Something else about the cerebrospinal fluid movement is not just that it brings nutrition and oxygen and bathes and cleanses and it perfuses our brain and our spinal cord with healthy healing properties, but it's also an electrolytic solution, which means when we get grounded, when we touch the earth outside, it's immediately grounded and it's grounded quickly and it grounds your entire central nervous system and it doesn't depend on synapses or the actual function of your neurons to get grounded. It's an electrolytic grounding solution, and that is what is holding the seat of our consciousness, our brain, and our spinal column, and basically our entire function of our body. And grounding has been shown in the medical literature for decades now to revitalize the health of our body, and that includes our central nervous system. There's been medical studies that show that within a second, milliseconds actually, of touching the earth and becoming grounded, that our brain waves shift in a positive way, our alpha brain waves are boosted. And there's also studies showing that this carries over into helping us get better and deeper sleep and boosts our mood and improves vagal tone and that thereby improving oxygenation in our lungs and improving our heart function, lots of different health benefits that kind of have a domino effect. But could it be that our cerebrospinal fluid is the point of contact, the original source of this resonance, this cohesion with the electrical earth? If you can go outside and be grounded electrically to the double heartbeat of the earth, which we know puts your body in a healing state, and then you can take those deep abdominal breaths. I really encourage you to give it a try. Go outside and touch some part of the earth's crust, whether it's a blade of grass, a plant growing up out of the ground, some water, some dirt, some sand, sidewalk, cement. You can get grounded in a lot of different ways and I have a million other videos demonstrating for you and even showing you with the ground test meter what surfaces are conductive out there and what will ground you and what won't. But if you can go out there and find one of those, so just start with a leaf on a tree, hold that in your hand and take three deep belly breaths all the way down past your chest into your stomach and let your stomach expand fully as an inhale and an even longer full exhale. Do that three times in a row and see how much better you feel and how immediate you notice the results. And then like those studies suggest, if we can keep up this habit and this practice and do this for four weeks, decreasing our Alzheimer's risk, for six months, boosting our cognitive function, for an entire lifetime, providing support to your brain so that it functions its best, 
It's really an exciting field of emerging research, and I'll definitely keep you posted. Dr. Zapatera said, and I think this is a really interesting thing to ponder, if you believe in homeopathic remedies, the way that our cerebrospinal fluid starts is when we're a little teeny tiny couple cells, we're becoming an embryo, and we form our neuronal tube, which makes this neural tube, and so the amniotic fluid that was on the outside now comes on, on the inside, it closes over. Now we're starting to be a little embryo with a little neural tube inside of us. And that originally was the amniotic fluid that was in our womb from our mother. So that is the start of our cerebrospinal fluid. And over our entire lifetime, we add to it and we add to it. And every single day we produce so much cerebrospinal fluid. But all that does is dilute out what was originally present. So over a lifetime, we're adding more nutrition, we're adding more oxygen, we're adding more fluid, we're adding more water, we're adding more electrolytes, more hormones, we're balancing things, we're taking away waste. But there's always a little essence of that amniotic fluid that was literally actually from your mom in that fluid. So is there a constant stream of consciousness because of the fact that we have had this amniotic fluid since it was outside of our body? and has now then become the bath that our brain lives in and our spinal column live in and depend on to have proper nutrients and oxygenation and hormones and sleep-wake cycles and function and brainstem functions and all of our autonomic nervous system functions and even all of our upper level functions, reasoning, memory, communication. So sensation, pain, everything, everything, self-awareness comes from that central nervous system, which is held in this fluid that has been added to inside your body since it was originally present outside of your body as amniotic fluid. And it's just constantly been diluted and halved and halved again and again and again and again and again. But are we, is that a basis of continuity, that feeling of continuity we have through our lifetime from an embryo until we take our last breath, we feel this continuous being, uh, this continuous presence whether you call it your soul energy or your awareness or the universe or your God spark, whatever it is, it's this continuous spark that carries with you your entire lifetime. Now our entire body besides our central nervous system is self replicating. So every cell in your body is not the same. Even your bones are on like a 10 year replacement program, but some things have really quick turnover, like the cornea of your eye or your taste buds or your stomach lining. And then some things take a little longer to turn over, but we're constantly being made afresh and anew. But there's one thing that isn't having a lot of cell turnover and actually never gets added to, and unfortunately only declines in cell quantity as we age. And that is our brain, our neurons, our central nervous system. So the only thing that's new and fresh to that is the cerebrospinal fluid around it, which is why it's really important to understand cerebrospinal fluid health, because that's what's bringing the freshness and the healing and the renewal to your central nervous system. And that, again, is the seat of our function and the seat of our awareness and our consciousness itself. And that is just being constantly added to and improved upon your entire lifetime, but never totally is renewed the same way other parts of your body is. So could it be that that continuity, the fact that that amniotic fluid that was in you when you were just a little embryo that is still in you and has been added to over the course of your lifetime, could that be affecting your consciousness? Could that be because there's that homeopathic amount that's constantly bathing your brain and that is the seat of your awareness and function, could it be that that is a continuity of consciousness and that provides something beyond that which we've been able to measure yet? I think it's super interesting. It's super fascinating. And I hope the idea was an interesting novel concept that maybe you hadn't thought about before and feel free to share with others.